you. <laughs> Tomorrow, the very dashing Benedict Cumberpatch will be here. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye, -bye. And this man. For London is about to cry out with heart and soul. Let the games commence. Oh, I love that bit. I love that bit. <laughs> Let's enjoy the six syllables that are Benedict Cumberbatch. Here he is. <laughs> Good evening, Benedict. That was great. Uh, it was a lot of fun to do. Yeah, it was. A lot of fun to do. Yeah, I, I, I was leaving the country to do a job and I just told my friends and family, I, I, there's a little message you might want to watch out just before the Olympics coverage starts on BBC One. So they got a bit of a shock when they saw it. That but then, fantastic. unfortunately, you weren't here to see... I miss so much of it. I saw it on American television, uh, you know, on a mu much contended time delay, but um, uh, I, I, was, I was in New Orleans doing a film with Steve McQueen. Oh, uh, well, you have to do that kind of thing. <laughs> I did, yeah. Well, and uh, it was... I, I, I was so proud, though. So proud of our city, so proud of our athletes. But you genuinely miss the Olympics, so you're going to make up for it with the Paralympics, is that Absolutely. right? Well, I'm here for that, so I can't wait. I can't no, wait. No, brilliant. Really, so. What events do you want to see? Uh, all the track and field. I mean, that's my favourite. That's what I used well, to do. Well, Ewan is going to inform you of some other stuff you've got to see, like goal ball, played with a four kilogram medicine ball. Murder ball. What? Murder ball. We'll talk about Whether it. Whether they're more mechanics amazing. than paramedics. Honestly, it's all true. It's all yeah, true. it is, honestly. Really? Okay, now, um, all night tonight, if it's okay with you, we're going to play mm. a little thing which we're going to call. <laughs> Cumber fact or cumber fiction? Right. Okay. You ready for okay. So, should we go first? Yeah, you go first. Okay. Yeah. So, you've told the Reader's Digest that you thought the last series of oh, Downton Abbey, which people love, wasn't very good. Cumber no. fiction. Oh, cumber fiction. fiction. No, you want a, to clear this up, don't you? Well, it was about one aspect comparing. I'd had all day of them comparing Parade Zone and Downton. We're, we're the same era, but we're very, very different animals, very different stories, and. There was one question about the comparisons between the use of war, and I was talking about that, and I used language I shouldn't have used, but I would never say that about the whole series. I've got friends and family who are in it. My dad was in the Christmas special, for heaven's sakes. So. Well, regardless of that, it is good anyhow. It is good, yes, it is good, and it deserves all the success that, it, that it's getting, and, and, you know, recognition in the States, which is great. And Were you taken out of context? It could have happened. See, that can't happen on this show, because we're live. So you enjoy well, the next 25 yeah, minutes. I sort we of fell between two context. stools. Don't take me out of context. Okay. Exactly it's no. impossible. Can't happen on the one <laughs> show. Never <laughs> any controversy on this show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All was fine. Right, well, you're back with a huge new BBC drama that isn't Sherlock, and we'll be hearing about that in a bit. Yes. Thanks so. for that. And you and Thomas is here. He knows everything there is to know about the Paralympics. Why is that? Qualify yourself. Basically, for the last three years, I've done a series called That Paralympic Show, and it's just been a privilege. I've got to work with our Paralympians. I've got to try out the sports as well, like murder ball, for example. It's called wheelchair rugby. We all know it's murder ball. Imagine a, a, a wheelchair with, as you can see there, like a shopping trolley welded to the front. It's basically organised violence. You've literally just got to get the ball through your opponents. And it's the only Paralympic sport where you have literally a Formula One pit crew who can come on and weld your chair at half-time, change your wheels. It's literally, it's that frantic. It's like British <laughs> yes. Bulldog. You know at the school, like British Bulldog, yeah. where literally the biggest boys were just bullets. It's the same wow. in wheelchairs. Wow. It's amazing. And the Britain are very good as well. We're ranked probably on paper fourth in the world, but recently we beat the second and third best team, which is Australia and Canada. Unfortunately, we are up against the Americans in the first round. As long as we beat Australia, it doesn't really yeah. matter. No. <laughs> but how do you win? Is it, a, you know, do they score points like rugby? Just like rugby, yeah. Got get okay. your ball across but there's loads more tactics involved well that's good there's another one called goal ball mm -hmm. which yep. is basically for visually impaired you've all got blindfolds so it's a blackout blinds no one can see it's a 4k medicine ball in essence with a bell in it so you can hear it at the last minute and they throw it to you and you're all three of you three per team in a big goal so you're all in essence goalkeepers and you've got to stop the ball now i've tried it and you get hit in the face it really hurts so you're literally just launching this medicine ball at each other and they do some crazy spin techniques you can't hear the whistle inside the ball to the last minute so, so they change the centrifugal force of the ball yeah, they will to stop the, the bell from ringing. To keep the bell on the outside spinning so you can't hear it until it hits the floor, bounces, last minute you hear it, you've got to die. You think, oh, my nose is about to get broken. Yeah. You've had it is dangerous. How long does that last for? I think the game is about half an hour. Okay. And, the and slow mo replays that are going to be amazing. The yeah, slow mo technology we've got. Crunch. For these games. I mean, I think people who are excited by the Olympics, mm -hmm. normally, with all due respect, the Paralympics has been the ugly sister that comes along two weeks after. No way. I mean, they've sold 2.2 million tickets. Beijing only sold 130,000. It's going to be huge. Are you hooked, Benedict? I am. I'm there. Murder ball. I love murder ball. Talking about that one. Wheelchair racing, which I've tried myself yes. as well. I did a half marathon last year. What was year the hardest thing? What was the hardest thing? You the did? hardest thing without having to train with Dave Weir, who's an absolute animal. Dave but Weir. But he really. he had an advantage over you, didn't he? Well, he's lighter, and his power to weight ratio. He's he's an absolute beast of a man. He can bench press 140 kilograms, and he only weighs 60. Oh. So when he's going up hills, he's literally just pushing away. Where for me, it was really hard work. But where Dave is amazing, all our athletes are. His range of abilities, the best in the world at the 100 metre sprint, 
right through to the marathon. Mm. So we've got so many range. talented yeah. athletes so, in the Paralympics. So even though you know everything there is to know, does trying the sport give you a different perspective? I won't say I didn't have loads of respect before but i've got it now you know i used yeah. to watch the paralympics and think oh that that's good oh aren't they doing well not in a patronizing way but now having spent time with them they are professional athletes who train harder than than the able-bodied athletes they are they really do humans. they are superhuman and i respect them so much what they've gone through and some of the life stories as well what's put them in a wheelchair for example before you know we've got soldiers now who are coming back from afghanistan who now are changing their lives around and becoming athletes and i just right. think it opens that door to so many people who are watching you may think you know, there's no sport for me. There is, and I think the Paralympics are going to inspire the nation. All right, so 12 days. It all starts on Wednesday. Yeah. Of course, the torch procession starts on Tuesday. We'll talk about that later. And you're hosting it. You're, you're, for, you're working for Channel 4, aren't you? <coughs> okay. Yeah, I'm going to be reporting. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, we want him back soon because it's yeah, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, win or lose the dedication. And Benedict, let's talk about your big, shiny new BBC costume drama. It starts in about... What, an hour a and a half time. on yeah, BBC it Two? It's called The Parade's oh, End. Fuck. And at the heart of it is, is a love story, really, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's a sort of triangular love story between a man who uh, marries um, a, a wonderful character that Rebecca Hall plays amazingly called Sylvia Satterthwaite, and he's called Christopher Tesians. And it's a very tempestuous marriage. They, they're two people who don't know the right way to love one another. And he tries to deal with her with kindness, and she plays out and is thoroughly scurrilous and scandalous and has affairs and basically tries to knock a reaction out of him beyond what he's giving her which is this passive kindness and tolerance and then this extraordinary third party joins their lives um, called uh, um, uh, oh, I think Valentine. was the name of the Valentine. Thank you very much, Valentine. Well one. done. Oh. Well done. Well done. Brilliant work uh, from Alex Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Valentine one up and uh, and that you immediately see that they are like minds and like souls and there's this incredible connection and he, because he is an incredibly damagingly virtuous man, he can't do anything about it. He sticks true to his marriage vows yeah. and it's about the sort of tortuous outcome of that. But um, it's very funny as it's well. It's quite I hard very, very you want to go, but... just grab her and give her a kiss, but give, you give, don't. Give her a kiss, I think you say something yeah. else then, OK. Anyway, this is you as Christopher being a little bit pompous. Here OK. You. But I see the Association of Domestic Servants is against the insurance bill. Why would that be, I wonder? And there's a chance to ask. Thank you. Well, go on, then. Well, Bridget. I'm sure I don't know, sir. Well, I'm sure I do. It is because the National Insurance Bill violates that beautiful intimacy that exists between the servant and their mistress. There we go. OK. I've got a question there for you. Yeah. You know, the character brave man or foolish man taking on the mother-in-law there. Yeah, but I think she respects his intelligence and knows that Sylvia's married... Um, she's married somebody who's not her intellectual equal. And it's, it, it, he knows he can make a point in front of her and she'll be fascinated by it, whereas Sylvia is enraged. Right, so is there he's a... Correcting the, he's correcting the Encyclopedia Britannica at the same scene as well. I mean, he's a bit irritating. Is it, a little bit like, Sherlock, it's like clever Sherlock? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. He doesn't parade it, he's doing it just to keep his head down. Right, and is there a subplot of an attraction between, between him and, and the mother-in-law? Not at all, though. Janet no, Matera is, no, no, is stunning. No, no. But, uh, no, that wasn't an intentional <laughs> subplot. No, because Where you are you know, going with this, Chris? Does your wife know about Because you this? say, you say she's, <laughs> she realises that her daughter's married above herself intellectually. Yeah. So she's thinking, no, well, I get you, but my doesn't, daughter doesn't Doesn't your mother-in-law you. say the same thing to you over breakfast? <laughs> Uh, no, no, not particularly about that, <laughs> that legislation. No. No, I think you know. I think she just knows. She appreciates him for who he is, and she can see what's what's the rifts that are there in the People are dying laughing in my ear. I thought it's quite a normal right. point of view. I have to say, so Rebecca Hall, who plays Sylvia, is phenomenal. She's in phenomenal. She? She's yeah, she's great. just knockout. Oh, she and gorgeous. Really right, good okay. cast. Which is, which really is really great. Uh, now we've got another Cumber Fact or Cumber Fiction. Ready mm -hmm. for this one? Uh, you said, Cumber Fact or Cumber Fiction, that you were so sick of people criticising you for being posh that you were heading to America for good. Cumber Fact or Cumber Fiction? I mean, Cumber Fiction. You know, I, you just see the clip of me in a period drama. I, I've been really lucky both in my upbringing, my schooling, and the opportunities I've had in my professional career to, to, to have a huge amount of advantage. So I work really hard to try and make the best of that, and I've done that by playing a variety of roles. So I've got absolutely nothing to complain about with typecasting. It's very easy 
to say something and for it to blow up into a national debate, especially with class. It's an, an important debate and it should continue because... It's an easy debate yes. for journalists to write about. It's inflammatory it? immediately and if somebody has been seen to say something about, oh, us, us poor posh people, then immediately that will vilify me as sort of public enemy number one because I'm posh. I didn't ever say that. You take it so out of context. It was very bizarre. <laughs> it was very bizarre, yes, yes. Take it out of context too. But, well, I was but, out of the country as well and I just got all these texts and emails going, do you know what's going on? Everyone's got their hands on the hips. There, there are four posh against posh people arguing and your name is following this argument through the press the television the radio it was very odd but, but you, you have to just laugh it off you're like, definitely not being typecast as a costume drama actor though because i mean you've done so many different things i mean you're in the hobbit playing a dragon mm. with and, martin yeah with martin yep. and star trek 2 yes um, is space classless that's what we want to know isn't space it? classless yes the future is is rid of all class <laughs> <laughs> it's all about how fast your spaceship is no i well i, I yeah. Oh, so there who is. do you play yeah. then in Star Trek 2? Uh, that person there. Yeah, OK. So there's lots of fighting in it. Mm, it's it's completely different then to, to the Parade's End, for example. You couldn't get more... There's not so much you. fighting in Parade's End, no. No. Uh, not, not too many <laughs> Vulcan grips. There's verbal jousting. Verbal jousting, exactly. It's, it's, it's a battle of the mind. Well, having said that, it is, you know, there are obviously... There's a great swathe of, of, of the drama that's set in World War I, which is, which is very extraordinary. And, uh, All right. And moving, and uh, but yeah, not the kind of fighting you'll see. Okay, if you love your Cumberbatch, and millions of people do, you get more brand new Cumberbatch tonight, BBC Two, The Parade Ten. Okay, and we will be asking the big Sherlock Holmes question later. Well, we've got to. We've we got have to. to. We've got no choice. We get <laughs> yeah. sacked otherwise. We've been told. Now we've not seen Jay for Benedict just before we go. Yes. Fans out there are desperate to know what's going to happen in the third series of Sherlock. Last time we saw you was a cliffhanger, tumbled to his death. Sherlock did in the end of the second series. Are you a ghost in series three? How long have I got? Uh, 20 seconds. <laughs> well, the thing oh! that's going... Come on, Benedict! It's slightly evasive all of a sudden. Something I can't talk about. But you're in it and it's back. It's definitely back. that much? Sherlock, Sherlock is back, everybody. <laughs> all right, and if you want a bit of Benedict, as I said, you've just got 90 minutes now to wait till you can see Benedict in the first episode of his brand new costume drama, Parade's End, over on BBC Two tonight at 9 o'clock. Yes, I'm back on Tuesday, and on Wednesday, the show will be live from Sheffield for a whole hour. Have a great bank holiday, but not in Scotland. No, let's go back. But enjoy the weekend. weekend. Thank you, Benedict. Thank you, guys. Well done.